Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So we're working well into the flowers and vines, I'd say, for this pass. We should hit 33% today, because yeah, I'm at 32.99. Um, I'm stitching not diagonally more in my revised uh, color flow method, which I've decided to call it. Although I didn't make it up. One of my, uh, one of my viewers did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you can see I'm not starting at zero today. Again, I had to wait for the light to come up well enough so that things should not be blurry. This thread had a knot before I even got started. <laughs> well, makes it easy to cut out, at least, I suppose. So yeah, exactly a third will be 102,300. Yeah, the uh, total number of stitches is nicely divisible by three, so. Yeah, although it'll sometimes say that it's reached um, that before it actually, the math will sometimes be off by a bit. I find when you have these um, really high stitch counts, yeah, they can, it can throw the math off a bit. So, so not, like I said, stitching totally diagonal. As you can see, it kind of curves and wobbles a bit, but still trying to not close in any stitches on all four sides is my, is my method. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, I follow the colors a bit more. I find it goes a little faster and it's still pretty pretty neat. It's when I start skipping and leaving gaps and closing in stitches on all four sides that I find I, I end up with more difficulties. It's harder to get the needle through and stuff like that, especially when I'm working on a, say, 18 count. This is 14, but yeah, when I'm working on 18 count, I also use two strands, and so it gets a little bit thicker, right, because obviously the, the squares are smaller. So I went to my friend's housewarming. She liked the blanket. <laughs> yeah, it looked great. She did most of it herself, and yeah, it looks looks awesome. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, her uh, her dog was still in the puppy stage the last time. I went to her place, so, <coughs> pardon me, he seemed a lot calmer this time, <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's full size now, he's big boy, yeah, he's 95 pounds, she said, so yeah, Yeah, well, I remember she showed me pictures when she adopted him and said, I adopted a puppy and he was already so big. I thought, wow, he's going to be huge. And yeah, I was right. He is a big boy. <laughs> <coughs> and yeah, she uh, showed me his bark, just encouraged him to speak. And yeah, he just does sort of one and it's very deep and sounds even bigger than he is. Yeah, she says, so it's, it's good for you know, deterring anybody who might want to break in. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's a sweetie and he likes everybody, so it's not like he would be much of a guard dog, but yeah, that sound is scary enough that I think, yeah, it would scare people off. Well, I remember her saying when they were kids, they had this little, like, terrier, but it had a really deep, throaty bark, and they said the people, the neighbors on either side got their homes broken into and theirs didn't probably because they heard the dog and thought it was like, you know, a Doberman or a Rottweiler or something. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to take those on. Yeah, I remember 
My kids and I were little and somebody's dog had got into our backyard. It was a Doberman. But I think he just wanted to play with us, but you know, we were little and he was a big dog and yeah, we were three feet tall, right? <laughs> it was scary. And you've heard all the horror stories, right? And being warned not to pet dogs you don't know and stuff. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so he's like sort of between us and the house. We're like, what do we do? So I, like pick up a stick and throw it. And then we run in and slam the door and he ran off after the stick. So yeah, he was probably trying to play with us. And I was thinking later, you know, poor thing was probably so confused, right? Runs to get the stick. It's like, hey, where, where'd you go? <laughs> mm. Okay, so still trying to like I said grow out from what I've got already stitched here so that means some sort of traveling up and down here that's how I do it I had some people say they found it confusing and yeah that's that's valid <laughs> I just think it's cool there's so many ways to stitch and they all look nice when they're done it was funny because, uh, yeah, my husband was making a remark. We got yellow snow, you know, along the walkways. And then it, for I don't know why, for some reason it reminded me. I, I worked in a newspaper for a couple of years. And um, we had, well, of course, our uh, our money was made mostly from, you know, advertisers. And we had four color ads, they call them, but that means it's full color, right? And then you had the spot color ads, which, so each sheet would have black and white and then one color. And there was yellow, red, blue, or green. And, you know, some advertisers cared what color, some didn't. So they would get a bit of a discount because they could be put on multiple pages or whatever. And then there was one company that their brand was like an orange color and so they didn't want to pay for the full color ad but they did want to use their brand's color and so they got to pay a bit extra for a spot color so they would take the whole page basically and do the ads for all four sides right because it one page is like one big sheet and it gets folded in the middle so you have yeah four sides and so they would take that whole page and it was called special yellow. And anyway, so I remember at Christmas, somebody was filling out the the form to uh, to get this put in the paper. And, and one of the graphic designers wrote on it, don't eat special yellow snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I imagine their process is a bit different now. Yeah, this was early 2000s. Um, that I worked there. And uh, yeah, we were still using fax machines and stuff. I remember one of my jobs was to send off um, faxes of mock-ups of the ads for the people to then approve or, you know, make whatever changes they wanted and send it back for it until we got their approval that it was good to go. And um, yeah, it's like, and then there were some people who would get PDFs with the computer, but like those were rare, like maybe 5% of people were getting PDFs. It's like now who has a fax machine, right? Like, yeah. I know there's some places that still use them for like contracts and things, but even now, like a lot of things are getting signed electronically. Cause yeah, it used to be sort of, you needed to have like a physical pen to paper signature, right? for legal purposes but now a lot of places yeah they uh allow electronic ones because yeah i know for some school paperwork we sometimes have that yeah they send it via the like google docs or something and then have you electronically sign off on it and yeah yeah I'm like trying to think i'm not sure whether i've actually signed a physical paper permission slip since my kid was in kindergarten because yeah I remember having to do those when I was a kid and uh, after I finished my my college course which was the um, 
office automated office assistant course uh i got they would give you two weeks of practicum so you don't get paid but you go shadow somebody on a similar kind of job and and then of course you could put it on your resume too right and i got assigned to an elementary school and yeah that was one of the jobs they assigned me was to get all the permission slips and you had to put them like sort of in alphabetical order by class and um like rubber band them all together, stick them in a box. Then the box had to go, you know, banker box had to go up on a shelf and you had to keep them. I think she said something for like 25 years or something. Yeah, which is just wild because I mean, the kids are long gone and graduated, but yeah, it was, it was quite a long time. I remember that. A lot longer than I would have thought of. Yeah. Now, I wonder if that's changed now, but yeah. Yeah, it was kind of, oh, it was really, um, that was a long two weeks because, I mean, it really was a one-person job, and so there really wasn't a lot for me to do but sit and observe, and yeah, it was, it was very boring. <laughs> yeah, I remember actually she assigned me, there was a Campbell Soup thing they had where you would have the late, if they collected a certain number of labels, they would give either funds or like prizes or something to the schools. So they would have all the parents save all their soup labels and they had to be cut a certain way so that it was showing the barcode had to be intact and then it had to have the picture of the product as well in like one continuous piece. And uh, so people had just torn off labels and you know thrown them in a box. So yeah, that's what I was... <laughs> I, I think I spent a couple of days trimming all these labels and flattening them out nicely and stuff so that they could be submitted in for the credit. Yeah. That's like, I wonder if they do stuff like that now. You know, when we were kids and you had to save cereal box tops and stuff to send away for prizes. We never did, though. Yeah. We only got the prizes that were actually in the cereal box. And it's like, do they even do that anymore? I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long time. And my kid still does buy the kid cereal, so, yeah. Yeah, we had one year, they actually had CD-ROM um, games in the cereal. They weren't actually in the cereal, technically. They were, like, taped to the box in a little plastic sleeve so they wouldn't get scratched up. But I think I still have a couple of those, even though, like, my computer doesn't have a disk drive anymore, right? Yeah. I don't even know if it would run it anymore. Like I have an external disc drive that like plugs into the USB for when I want to like put my music because I wasn't going to pay <clears throat> for things I bought on CD. I wasn't going to pay for it again, right? To get the um to get the uh MP3. So, yeah, I'm too cheap for that. So, <laughs> mm. it been, can be kind of a pain though because some discs the metadata doesn't come through so you have to spend like hours sometimes updating because it would just say like track one track two track three and right how are you going to find what song you want when it doesn't have the name on it right yeah but yeah like i said i don't know if that game would even play anymore because i know a lot of older games sometimes they actually relied on your computer not having really fast processing power and so they didn't bother putting in timing to slow it down sort of thing and then as technology advances com computers can run so much faster now that a lot of those old programs will no longer play because yeah like i said it processes it too quickly they cared about releasing the game for you know now and didn't really care whether it would work in the future yeah yeah, I remember it was like years later, I'd had this one, they used to sell these games, I remember, they used to sell sample ones at like the dollar store, it was like five bucks and it would come with like the first few levels or something, and then you could of course send away to order the whole thing through the mail, because you know, pre-internet, but um, and so years later I, I found the old CD-ROMs on eBay and bought it, and then I tried to play it in my computer, and yeah, wouldn't play because it, the computer was too fast. My husband had to download this, like, temporary... You would turn it on, it would slow down your computer on purpose so that you could play these old... Like, it was an emulator or whatever? Yeah. Because I wanted to finish those games. <laughs> yeah, 
this. Some of those old DOS games, they were fun. These ones had full controls and everything. They weren't like the old 80s style where you had to actually type in the commands. But yeah, we did have one game that was like that. And uh, it was kind of frustrating because the graphics were not very good. And so like we had one where there was a pumpkin on the, like a jack-o'-lantern because it was a Halloween game. There's a jack-o'-lantern on the front step and you type in open pumpkin and it breaks open. Well, there's something in there but the graphics were so bad, we couldn't tell what it was supposed to be. And so we're like, you know, look at ground and it says, well, I can see nothing more than you at this point. And so obviously it was wanting us to type in, like pick up whatever the object was, but like we didn't know what the object was because the graphics were so lousy. We eventually figured out it was a key, but yeah. It was kind of funny too, because they had, um, we would goof around and so we put in there like we said look in toilet and it would say no i'd rather not thanks <laughs> which of course we thought was just absolutely hilarious oh yeah yeah it's just wild how much technology has changed in my lifetime and i i'm curious how much more it's going to change yeah because yeah first computer i use had the black and green DOS command screen, right? Yeah. I remember when, when the first Windows came out, such a big deal, using a mouse and everything. It's like, yeah, I can't remember DOS commands anymore. I haven't used them in so long. Yeah, now coding is a, a class you can take in school. Yeah, my kiddo's taken. He took one last year. He's trying it out because he does like doing that kind of stuff because um, he plays the Brick Rigs game and you can design your own stuff and actually upload it and other people can use it. So he designs like street lights and stuff because it's for like cars and things and, and houses and stuff. So you like you make a little simulation, right? And you can drive around in it and yeah. Yeah, he's always... He's always loved streetlights <laughs> when he was a little guy. He liked to watch hours come on at night because um, I think they would come on and they'd be yellow until they'd, they'd flicker and then they'd start to warm up and then turn white. And he was just fascinated as a toddler just standing there watching it happen. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, even now, he can tell you all the different kinds high-pressure sodiums and uh, and mercury vapor and all this stuff. And in fact, they had to do in science class, they had an assignment where they had to do an infographic and it could be on any topic they wanted. So he did his on streetlights, different kinds of streetlights. Yeah, the pros and cons and sort of, you know, how long they last and how much, um, you know, light they give off and the environmental impact when they need to be replaced. And yeah, it was, it was funny. It was just like, yeah, when I said, oh, so what are you doing for your infographics? He's like, oh, mine's on streetlights. I'm like, oh yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, my friend, she's a teacher at his high school. And uh, she sent me a picture and says, oh yeah, he came in and drew streetlights on my board. I'm like, of course he did. And like, he didn't sign it, but everybody knows who it is. Yeah, who does that? So he's the only student who does, so <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cute. Yeah, it was funny, actually, because um, she had a few other fellow teachers at her little housewarming party. And there was one lady we got to talking and we discovered that she had been my son's art teacher in ninth grade. She said, oh, OK, I thought you looked kind of familiar. And I was like, oh, OK, I guess there was enough resemblance, right, that she could tell that's my kid. It's it's funny because everybody always remarks how much he looks like his dad. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. When uh, the first time we went around to my husband's current workplace and one of his coworkers said, holy cow, you know, talk about a copy paste. Like your kid's your clone. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they have the same haircut, right, too. So, and he's almost as tall as his dad as well. So yeah, there's a few times people said they saw him driving around and they thought it was his dad and that, oh, nope, that's him. Yeah. Although there's a little bit of me in there. I said, well, there has to be because there's some, there's some features that 
look a lot like my grandfather, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because uh, my husband found, found some old pictures of us when we were just really, we were little. I'm the oldest of all the cousins, and I think I was like 12 or something. She showed me the picture, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I'm my mom's clone in this picture. <laughs> And my husband would often say that he didn't see it, that I do look a lot like my mom. And then he saw the picture. He's like, oh, yeah, okay, I see it now. <laughs> I was the same when I was a kid. People always remarked how much I look like my mom. And then my sister and I were mistaken for twins a lot, even though we're two and a half years apart. But then my sister doesn't really look like my mom, which is kind of interesting. Like, there's enough changes between, yeah. That even though my sister and I were mistaken for twins a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I remember my mother-in-law saying that her oldest two, my husband and then his next youngest brother, that they looked like twins when they were little. And I saw some, you know, pictures and I'm like, I can tell they're brothers, but twins? I don't know. Not like me and my sister. There were times people, like even in the family would look at pictures and think that it was me when it was my sister and vice versa, right? So, and our voices are really similar. My mom talked to me on the phone once for like 15 minutes and she thought I was my sister. <laughs> this is when, you know, we were kids. And then she's like, okay, well go practice your violin. I'm like, I don't play violin. And oh, shoot. All right, take a quick break here. Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh. Anyway, yeah, so my mom says, practice your violin. And I'm like, I don't play violin because my sister took violin, but I didn't. And then she's like, oh, who am I talking to? I was like, yeah, you don't even recognize your own daughter. <laughs> well, you did. You just didn't know which one it was. Yeah. Uh, well, one time when my, my husband and I were first dating and my sister and I were standing right next to each other and he came up behind my sister and almost hugged her before realizing it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. Because we're like, you know, similar height build. We stand the same way. Yeah. So. Yeah. All of a sudden he looked down and like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, we don't look as much alike now that we're older. But, I mean, you definitely can tell that we're we're siblings, right? Yeah. But yeah, even when we were in like early 20s, when I was working at the newspaper and a guy came into the newspaper, I was like, I know this face. Do you have a sister who works at a diner, you know, the next town over? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's funny. Oh, there we go. 33%. So. About a thousand stitches to go to be exactly a third done. So yeah, like I said, it'd be 102,300. And we're at 101,278. So yeah, just over a thousand stitches to be precisely one third of the way done. Okay, done this, but actually what I might do is set all these aside for a bit and just start working from this bit here. Filling in here, I'll go down and then I'll go up and fill in a bit more there and just wherever I feel like it, like I said, it's, so it's not quite diagonal, but I still find it fairly methodical 
It makes sense to me. Yeah, my husband and his brother, their voices sound quite similar on the phone, too. At least when we were all younger, they did. I haven't talked to him on the phone in a while, so I'm not sure if they do anymore, but yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Voices are something I recognize usually very quickly. A lot of times when there's an actor that I have seen in something else before, it's usually their voice I recognize first before, before their face. Yeah. Yeah, I said there's this one guest star in a Star Trek episode that his voice is so familiar and I've looked up all his roles on IMDb and I'm like, he must have been like maybe one line in something that he wasn't credited in. Like, you know, maybe a background character in a cartoon or something. But yeah, every time I watch that episode, it irritates me. <laughs> Because I'm like, I know that voice. Where is it from? I'm like, or it's possible that like someone else's voice sounds so similar that, yeah, I'm mixing them up. And so, yeah, it's been years, but may, I don't think I'll ever know. Because, yeah, I said, um, we watch NCIS and um, Gibbs left a few years ago. And uh, Gary Oldman took the that role. And their voices are very similar that for the first like couple of seasons I kept getting confused I was like wait is Gibbs back and I look up and oh no it's not him right but yeah their voices are very are very similar yeah that show's been on a long time yeah they had a goodbye episode for Ducky even though he he wasn't a regular cast member anymore but uh the actor who played him uh passed away in uh, a few months ago, I believe. And so, yeah, they wrote it into the show and had a goodbye for him. And yeah, I was, I was sad because I loved his character. Yeah, Dr. Mallard, so they called him Ducky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going to do, so I did all of these. I'm going to do this one here because I want to be able to wrap around with the other on the next row without leaving a gap. So what I'm going to do is cross all these and park. Like I say, there's a method to my madness. But yeah, anyway, he lived a good long life. The actor was 90. So yeah, but like I said, we're never ready to lose people, right? Yeah. Yeah, my grandma gave us a scare a few months ago. She's also 90. And uh, but she pulled through, so she is still with us. But yeah, my cousin is really close to her. Well, they live close to each other. We, of course, live far away, so I don't get to see her very often. But uh, yeah, she is going to be an absolute wreck when we lose her. Yeah. Okay, so I did that because then I wanted to be able to take, oops, this thread here and wrap around like this and not leave a gap. So that is why I did it that way. So yeah, this flower kind of curves, I think. Yeah a bit and then so I'll kind of probably follow it fill it in a bit and then I'm going to go up and sort of fill in that other spot there so like I said there's a little bit of closing in but not more than I can handle still like I said try to close in only two to three sides but not four
this is a very bright color. Yeah, and then once we get past these vines, there'll be more of the wall, which should go a bit faster, I think. The, I looked at it and there's some more bigger blocks, so. Um, I'm, there might be, let me find my little, I printed out the mock-up so I could refer to it without having to take my screen back. Yeah, there's a little bit more vines right up against that edge, but not very much. Yeah, and then we'll be starting pass number four. So far, nobody's gotten stuck. Yeah, we had a whole big bunch of snowfall the last couple of days. Yeah. My uh, husband was busy with the, the snowblower. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised because my brother-in-law, he still hasn't had one. They've been living out here longer than we have. But I don't know, maybe his, I think his driveway, he can just push it to the side for hours for almost two car lengths. You really can't because there's the neighbor's fence on one side, so you can't really be piling snow up against the, their fence, right? And the other side is where our stairs are for the back door, which is the ones we use the most. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, like I said, for like two car lengths, you have to push the snow down before you can push it over to the side. So that's a lot of work when you're talking about, yeah, <laughs> you know, eight inches of snow. Yeah. And it kind of blows into and like creates a drift in that area and creates like dunes and yeah, so. Yeah, my car actually, I was afraid I wasn't gonna get out of the driveway. <laughs> my husband actually had to help me because I was afraid to gut it and like spin the tires and get stuck, but he's a bit more assertive than me, shall we say. So yeah, he got in and he got it out on the street and then I went, but uh, yeah. But then yeah, when I went to, because it formed such drifts around the tires and kind of froze to them that I put the car in reverse and like it didn't move. Usually you take your foot off the brake and immediately starts rolling. Well, it didn't and I'm like, did I put it in neutral? No, okay. And uh, yeah, I actually had to put it in drive and sort of go forward a bit in the back and kind of rock it back and forth a couple of times before I could crack the ice that was stuck around my tires so I could move, yeah. And my brakes were almost frozen too, which was kind of scary. I was going down my, my uh, driveway and it was kind of going faster than I wanted to and I was pushing on the brakes and it wasn't slowing as quickly as I wanted it to. It was like, Ooh. <laughs> uh, I did get it under control though so we were all good there was no cars coming to I made sure before I started backing down so <laughs> but yeah it was a tense couple of moments there <laughs> yeah it's well because we have an extreme cold warning today and possibly for tomorrow and then within a few days it's supposed to warm up to like above freezing. So yeah, it's just wild. Goes from extreme cold warning to, yeah, everything's melting. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it was fake spring because yeah, the first four times it feels like spring is never actually spring when it's here. Yeah. So you, en you enjoy the warmer weather, but you always have to remind yourself it's not going to last. Don't get disappointed when more snow falls, because it will. <laughs> when the temperature drops again, because it will. Yeah. Okay, so I did that one as well. I have another thread parked lower down that I will carry over sideways.
lot of threads of this color, I think. There's quite a big patch of it here. So grab the other one. All right, let's see if we can get these needles free or if I need to start taking things off needles. Yeah, when there's a lot of threads, I often just end up having to re-thread more because once you get too many going, I can tangle more on you. Okay. So yeah, that's why I kind of set all this aside. I may take those needles off as well if I need them. For now, I'll leave them. And I'm going to keep filling in this area here. And then I may go up to those ones I set aside, or I may go further up and fill in. We'll just, we'll see. I decide as I go. So, so again, I can see there's sort of a natural break point being formed here. And so I will follow that. And make my break there. So. Just tame my threads for the moment. Yeah, I think these ones can see some of them came off by themselves. That does happen. Okay. Just set those aside. Come back to them later. Make sure I remember to mark what I've done. So I filled in and then I parked it in that one. Okay. Yeah, make sure I don't get myself mixed up as to where I am long one. Just gonna check this other one. I think it's, oh yeah, that's sufficient. So I'm gonna tie off this top one here. I don't need it. Yeah, so I think I started around 100 this session. I forgot to look. I did point out that I didn't start at zero, but I can't remember what I did start at. Yeah. Stitch for about an hour. That's what I usually do. Yeah, you can hear people driving along. It's that squeaky snow. <laughs> oh, don't get stuck, dude. It's a minivan. Okay, good, they made it. <laughs> yeah, the corner, because we have the street bends around and there's almost like a cul-de-sac part and the wind kind of packs all the snow in there and it can make it for deeper drifts than sometimes people are expecting, but... Well, oh, this guy made it, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, there was um, last year, last winter, a uh, school bus got stuck in that, going around that corner, and it was blocking it, and I actually had to uh, turn around and come approach my house the other way. And, uh, yeah, I felt bad leaving them, but like I said, with my tiny little element, there's not much I can do to help a yeah, great big school bus, so yeah. They were stuck there until some, until they could be pulled free by a big tow truck. <laughs> Ooh. I think they had to send another bus out to get the kids and finish delivering them home. Yeah. Well, some of the people do sort of blow their snow into the street kind of, so you have to be careful not to go too close to the curb or yeah, you get stuck in the drifts. We have pretty wide streets here. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a change when we went to Vancouver to uh, visit my mother-in-law in her last days driving my husband's big truck. It was so big that the mirrors were touching the the uh, trees on the side of the road. It was wild. Yeah. He's a good driver, so there was no problem. But yeah, it was just like, wow. <laughs> this great big freaking tank of a vehicle. Yeah. 
Well, we could have taken my car, but going on the Coquihalla Highway in the winter, yeah, you don't want the bigger vehicle, kind of the better off you are sort of thing. So, yeah. But yeah, like I said, fortunately we made it in time and uh, she was still lucid enough to recognize all of us. So yeah, we got to have a nice visit. Like I said, it was, it was quite a shock. We were expecting to have her with us for a lot longer as she was quite young when she, she first started having kids, so. Yeah, we thought maybe she was going to, well, we expect her to be around to see her great-grandkids because, yeah, like I said, my oldest niece is getting married this year, you know. So that might have not been too far off in the future. Yeah. Oh, who knows? We were, but we were married five years when we had our son. So. Yeah, it was kind of funny, actually. She said, so are you guys wanting to have kids right away? I said, I think we want a little bit of time to just us. And she says, no, that's a good idea. She said, yeah, we had kids really early. And I mean, I don't regret it, but it could be pretty stressful. So, yeah. Yeah, my uh, my husband's brother, they, they did not wait long. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said, they have seven of them, so, yeah. Like, uh, my mother-in-law was bugging us, of, are we going to have any more? And uh, I said, look, you know, y your other son has seven kids. You're not hurting for grandchildren, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, we, we wanted to have at least two, but that just was not in the cards for us, so, yeah. And that's just the way life is, right? Yeah, just like some friends I have who yeah wanted to have one more but then surprise it's twins so yeah I guess you're getting two more <laughs> yeah oh gosh there was someone saying that uh they were sent to have an ultrasound early on because um her hormone levels were so high in that early in the pregnancy that they suspected multiple. Um, and uh, so, yeah, she goes in and ultrasound tech is looking. She nervously asks, you know, how many? And the technician says, I've counted three so far. And she says, oh, God, stop looking. <laughs> like, uh. So it turned out to be three. But yeah, yeah, triplets is a lot, you know. I said, like, when it's twins... You know, like, if there's two adults, well, one may be each, right? But if there's three, you're outnumbered, yeah. Although, who knows? My uh, my husband worked with a lady who had a single baby, and then she had twins. And she said, actually, her twins were easier. She kept them in the same crib, and they soothed each other. So, yeah, who knows, right? Yeah. But I still said, like, that's twice the feedings, twice the burpings, twice the diaper changes. yeah. Twice the baths, right? Well, I mean, maybe one bath, but you got to bathe twice as many babies, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Nothing but admiration for people who have multiples. I don't think I could have handled it. Although I suppose if it had happened, I would have just had to, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, one of my friends, she had family pictures taken with her twins because uh, her boys are almost too big for her to pick them up. So she wanted to do a picture. She had one in each arm and they were both kissing her on the cheek. It was really sweet. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I wanted to get that, that photo before. They're too big for me to pick up anymore. Yeah. 
It's wild, though. The whole evil twin trope actually came. There were some cultures who, you know, before it was understood how twins could happen, actually thought. There were some who thought that, like, the soul was split between two, and so that only one had a soul, and one was evil. And, yeah, there was all sorts of the firstborn twin is the good one, and the second is the evil one. And, yeah, just wild. But uh, they come up with... I read a book where there were... It was set in medieval times, so they believed that. And so they branded the second baby so they could tell them apart. And then, yeah, it was pretty sad because, like, her grandma always treated her horribly just for being born second, right? And, yeah. So, like, one time she switched places and dressed up as her sister. And uh, the grandma was actually being nice to her. And uh, she, uh, oh, I think I screwed something up here, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I did. I know what I did. I grabbed this thread and I parked it up here. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, that's no problem. So I meant to pick up this one. Yeah, I see what I did wrong. Thankfully for my grid lines, I can tell immediately where I went wrong. So. Okay, now back to this, so. Yeah, here we go, this is what I should have done. Yeah, I suddenly realized my, my stitching was not matching the pattern, which usually means then I have messed up somewhere. Okay, back on track now. Yeah, I guess I was talking too much and got distracted. <laughs> mm. Plus, yeah, these uh, these colors are all very similar too, so it can be easy to mix them up if you're not careful. tie off. Okay, less than a thousand stitches to go to hit the third done. Woohoo, so maybe by next session? Maybe not, we'll see. Maybe during next session? Who knows? But I definitely will hit it this month. That'll be no problem, yeah. I usually manage anywhere from 8,000 to 15,000 a month. It just sort of depends on uh, how much time I get to stitch and whether it's a really intricate part of the pace or not. Yeah, obviously bigger blocks go a lot faster. So there we go. So like I said, closes in a bit on some sides. Try not to close in too much. Try not to close in on all four is my biggest rule of thumb. Okay, so I might have more threads than stitches to do here, but 
now we'll keep these all active. I don't worry about that. If I end up with more strands attached than I need, I just end one off and save the leftover bits for later. So what I may do is carry this strand sort of up a bit and just stitch it until it runs out rather than, oops, rather than tying it off and saving the bits. My gosh, I don't usually smack into my frame that much. Goodness. Trimmed it so it should not be doing that to me. So, yeah, because there's more along this edge. So, I think I'm just going to stitch it until it's gone. These four that I've highlighted will be it. Yeah, that should do it. Super bright colors, I like to tuck along the back sometimes so the ends won't come through. All right, so actually, if I put this one aside, but I may just pull it out. For a couple of stitches.
should be just long enough to be able to do this one stitch here. So I'm just gonna tack it down with a pin stitch. So it's gonna be super short. That's why that keeps it from getting snagged and pulled to directions that I don't want it to be pulled in.
right, so I think I can finish this color block here, and then that will be where I call it a day. To split the fabric there. should not be. Oops. Now when the pieces get close to the end, they can tend to get unthreaded fairly easily. Yeah, that is where I'm going to take a break for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.